Uh, hello everyone, we are the Jolly Rogers. I'm just going to introduce us all. My name is Claire. We have George on the project. This is Jean, Mark, Flora, Nadine. It's a bit of a test there for myself. So, what are hidden treasures? Well, hidden treasures are the personal stories that we collect throughout our lives. They're stories that are linked to place and to people. Which stories do we remember? Well, when we plan big events, when we plan holidays, when we plan big nights out, it isn't the big things we tend to remember. It's the peripheral things around the edge. It's those special little moments that happen. These are the nuances of experience, and in some ways they're the emotional connection that we have with place. Well, the explosion in social media has shown that there are uh, two types of people. There are, there are foyers, and there are um, exhibitionists. The exhibitionists are the people that like to uh, share their experiences and share things with other people. And the voyeurs are the ones that like to search out other people's experiences. Our service lets you anonymously hide or discover those special stories. Cool, so imagine this. This is Diane, she's 31 years old, she's an HR consultant. Yesterday, she was sitting at New Espresso waiting for a friend. She pulls out her phone and opens Pika to peek at the anonymous, intimate stories associated with the cafe. She filters her search uh, by romance and finds a sweet story about a man who's about to propose to his wife in that very cafe. She opens up the photo of the ring. She's touched. Let's see what happened. So, seven days ago, uh, this is Jürgen. He's 27, he's an architect. A week ago, he was sitting at Nude Expresso waiting, waiting to propose to his girlfriend. He usually shares all his thoughts on Facebook, but doesn't want to be humiliated in case she says no. So he takes out his phone and opens up Pika. He writes this story. Um, apparently, the ring cost him about two weeks' wages. He takes a photo and uploads it. He then associates his personal story with the cafe and tags it as romantic. Um, so this way, he stored his story as a hidden treasure to be discovered by other visitors. So what we did is we went outside to share our concept. And after the positive feedback, we came back and built a prototype. Today, we went outside again to um, prove and to test what people actually would put on PCAR. And um, yeah, people already collect stories, that's what we found out. So there was one woman, she told us, for example, that she saw a woman who had a wee on the street, and that's why she bought the sticker to stay reminded of it. <laughs> yeah, these are the stories people would put on Pika. Okay, um, marketing and segmentation, we're quite clear that there are quite a few smartphone users already around the world. This could be a global product. Um, our market research tells us it's going to be cross-generational as well. Um, and we also know, as we've already heard, we've got voyeurs and exhibitionists. So some people will want the app and will actually look on the website. Some people may just want to look on the website. But that's fine. Um, we are aware that there are a number of um, propositions out there already. But what we have here is a unique proposal. We have a unique proposition, a new, unique product with Pika. We did a bit of a short-term and medium-term projection. Um, with regard to how we see the project growing over the um, medium and long term. And the next slide is that we are looking at what our income would be. Um, the app is free, obviously the website is free. Um, you would pay a 99p um, charge for a fun additional functionality premium app. <laughs> obviously we do know that um, the retailers will take 30% off that, um, but there's other income streams as well, such as merchandising, we could get some business-to-business -business work going as well, um, and then also some contractual advertising, which we think would bring in an additional income stream. So the question that uh, remains for everyone is, what stories would you leave behind for others to discover? What are your hidden treasures that you leave for others? Thank you very much. possibilities of um, allowing maybe photo uploads um, 
it's a, for the free app only, you maybe have um, just the ability to comment on the story, uh, but basically more creativity. Yeah, okay, I was about to say that creativity. So, so part of the whole thing is about making this look creative. So it's a story, stylized text, fonts, <laughs> colors, etc. So a bit like um, Post Secret, that's part of our inspiration. Um, so we thought a premium app would enable you to do even more customization, a bit more creative. talked about quite an ambitious plan, potentially a global app. What do you think it would take to get it started and to get people using it in the beginning? Do you mean motivation for, for people or are you talking money? No, I, I know. how do you attract users to actually post content and want to go and look at it? We had a look at how um, Diane, the, the HR consultant, would possibly get involved in something like this. We thought that she's, a, she's an early adopter of IT, but she would probably need reassuring about the, uh, about the site. So we thought that she would be the sort of person who might see a mention on Twitter, it might be a recommendation from a friend, but it may also be an advert she sees as well. So it would probably be a, a variety of things, but then it would be a case of that, that hook um, and once she sort of looks into it, then she's going to be recommending it to her friends as well, which is the best form of advertising. Uh, one more opportunity that could be to uh, focus on a particular local area and um, to get them to actually put these things online. Because they are anonymous, you don't need to sign up for uh, usernames, so you can get a lot of these online very quickly and then direct people towards how to download those apps. So I feel as though a number of those kinds of launches could really help it to, to lift off. And at the end of the day, so when we went out and we spoke to lots of people, like we, we got the distinct impression that people were voyeurs, they wanted to know these intimate secrets. At the same time, the difference between this and any other sharing application, so um, Pinterest, Twitter, etc., this was completely anonymous. So none of your uh, stories are linked together, so it's almost confessional, a bit like post secret. So, so we're almost hoping that people, on the one hand, want to confess things. Um, and on the other hand, we're hoping people are, people's curiosity is going to be piqued to actually see what intimate stories associated with this place. Sorry, I think I'm just a little unclear on this. Is this a is the idea that it's about experience or about place primarily, or does it not matter? It's about yeah. both. I don't know. So Claire, I think you had some thoughts on this as well. Yeah. So the idea is that you um, the place is quite important. It's the idea that you can pin that experience to a place, and uh, the searchability. So for the voyeur you would be able to search by uh, postcode, by the location, like the venue that you're in, all that kind of thing, and find other people's stories from that. Uh, you might be going on holiday, so you might search uh, for the area around your hotel where you're going to be staying when you go away on holiday. Um, so the, the location is very important to that, and, and it would be kind of like the map, the idea of the map with all the hearts, and that was quite important. So if I run a restaurant, then could you generate advertising revenue from me because my restaurant's on your service? Possibly, yes. One, yeah. one of the ideas that we have actually, we discussed but quite late, so we, you, we mentioned merchandising there. Um, and so we were talking about, so being able to people, so the photos and the, the stories that people upload, creative commons, so everyone can create something printed, so creating t-shirts, books, bags, with the pictures and with the, uh, with the, with the stories. And then we talked about how can we make money from venues so venues have access to this as well, so we could charge them to create a little book or use it as posters. And you know, so some of these can be really personal, meaningful experiences that aren't just reviews of the venue. So you know, if if, if I if I propose to someone at a particular place, or my brother just told me he was going to have a baby, and I, and I put these kind of stories there, those are really powerful things that the venue could then use to create merchandise out of, and that's also how we make money. So my last question to you is, have you thought about what you want to do with this project after this weekend? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we actually discovered a platform in our research called Calvium, one kind gentleman alerted us to, uh, which allows a lot of the geotagging uh, capabilities that we need in order to pull this off. Um, to be done, and the, the licensing fee for that is, is actually quite cheap. The publishing fee, I believe, is £500. Um, so there is definitely uh, a next step there, and then from there, I mean, various different ideas about how to launch, like launch parties or going onto the street and, and various things like that. Yeah. We've got, we've got, we, we feel comfortable with the, we've got a lot of solid details out there we can, can 
build it almost and d design it in more detail. Do you want to? Uh, we, we've actually thought about the staffing and the premises and how we would take the project forward um, and costed it and everything. So, so, you, so, so who in the teams thought about taking it forward? We, we like we, we were talking about it before. We all love the idea now. Yeah. Like it was, there was actually we had three ideas yesterday, and this was our like lowest idea. And then eventually we eliminated the other two because other idea and feedback was that it was creepy. And this one's the best. One. <laughs> so this one people genuinely love. Even in the public, like outside when we spoke to people, they said fun, charming. They they genuinely loved the idea. It was really positive. So I think we're all really quite excited by it. Yeah. The, sorry, just quickly, the Voyeur exhibitionist thing that actually came from a member of the public. It, no surprise, perhaps, that he was from Amsterdam. <laughs> but I, I forgot to say, we are Jolly Rogers, we were based here, and what was the other thing I was supposed to say? Pika. Pika. Pika is the name of the project. <laughs>